historically one of the best protections of the value of money against the inroads of political spending was the gold standard, the redemption of money in gold on demand. This put a check rein on the politician, Warren Randolph Burgess. Hello, welcome back. Let's continue with our journey through Cervantes' brilliant novel. Chapter 46 comically alluded to Neoplatonic love in Don Quixote's Ballad to Altisidora. Chapter 47 alludes to Plato by opening with Sancho's conflict with his court doctor, Pedro Recio de Agüero, who tries to control the governor's diet. Given Sancho's princely status, this medical theme is also platonic. A well-ordered, harmonious republic is the goal of classical political philosophy, and terms related to medicine and health dominate books like Plato's Republic. It's easy to sympathize with Sancho, who simply wants to eat, I'm starving to death, and to deny me food, even if it disagrees with Mr. Doctor, and he has more to say about it, is to take life from me rather than wish me a long one. Recio is a medical version of the annoying ecclesiastic who confronted Don Quixote at the Ducal Palace. The conflict between Sancho and Recio is between gluttony and abstinence, echoing that between arrogance and humility. Symbols and puns suggest a lesson in political restraint. The doctor denies Sancho's various dishes by tapping them with a whalebone staff in his hand. Derived from bristles in the mouths of baleen whales, I suspect this rod alludes to Jonah, who was swallowed by a whale because he refused to perform the Lord's politics. Similarly, Recio objects strongly to a dish of partridges, which alludes to Juan Manuel's political criticism of the Dean of Santiago in El Conde Lucanor. Finally, the term platonazo, or big dish, ironically hints at the importance of Plato's notion that the ideal leader is humble. Did you know princely advice manuals, especially those by Plato and Machiavelli, were among the preferred reading of the kings of the new transatlantic superstates, such as England, Spain, and France? Recio's medical philosophy evinces Occam's razor a logical principle that states that all things being equal, simplicity should trump complexity. Simple medicines are preferred to compound ones because with simple medicines, there are mistakes one cannot make, but which we can with compounds by confusing the quantities of the substances out of which they are composed. In other words, all things being equal, a compound medicine risks being mixed wrong, resulting in poison. As the chapter progresses, Recio's concern for abstinence and simplicity seems to be the correct political lesson. Sancho explodes in a fit of tyrannical rage. Sancho, burning with rage, threatens to kill Recio. I'll take this chair I'm sitting in and I'll smash it over your head. This echoes Don Quixote's reference to the Cid's violent reaction to the Pope in chapter 19 of part one. Sancho uses political language, recalling the Spanish custom of putting officials on trial at the end of their terms and justifying his violence as a Machiavellian matter of reason of state. Let them ask me about it during the review of my time in office and I'll justify my actions by saying that I did a service to God by killing a bad doctor who would have murdered the Republic. Quixotic mission. Who represents the origin of Western political philosophy? A. Hobbes B. Plato C. Moses Correct answer, B. Plato Nevertheless, the episode reveals Cervantes' perspectivism that is, his use of irony to question and problematize the reader's acceptance of points of view that might appear rational at first. Right when Sancho has overstepped his power, behaving like a despot, a letter arrives from the Duke informing him that enemies plan to attack the island. A comical touch here is that Sancho cannot read the letter and has to ask, who here is my secretary? 
when a Basque steps forward, Sancho says that you could easily be secretary to the emperor himself. Now, this newborn secretary replaces Recio as an advisor who endorses the idea that during a crisis such as war, rulers must act as despots. This, of course, is the age-old justification of imperialism. Now, Sancho seems reasonably paranoid, and ironically, he adopts the abstinence recommended by Recio previously. Moreover, like a Machiavellian prince, Sancho doubts the utility of religious orthodoxy, agreeing with his steward not to eat in order to avoid being poisoned. It was prepared by some nuns, and as is often said, behind the cross lurks the devil. Sancho sends the envoy back to the Duke with regards to his master and an odd reminder to the Duchess not to forget to send his letter to Teresa. That's all for now. Join me next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Pan. Thank you.